we welcome you to the 15th IESF World Esports Championships and we enter the Grand Finals. This is Philippines versus Indonesia. Talking a hero that either he's going to have a good time farming up early on or just let him, you know, spend the majority of the early mid game farming up. If it's the Brody, I think that might be a priority here for the gold lane. But as we jump into this draft here for game one, you can see Philippines will be on the blue side. Just to clear things up, by the way, because they were upper bracket and they had the advantage, they chose the side that they wanted to be on, right? Yeah, we've There's thought no, about it, yeah. No, it, that's the advantage. So it's a best of five starting at even grounds. First band's coming out here. Let's see what the first pick. Probably Fredrin off the top of my head. Good choices here. They take out the Kaja, they've taken out the Eve, disabling more of the team fights, disabling more of the regen with this Faramis. On to Indonesia. They respect the hell out of this Franco, even for the Devari. We were talking about it early on. And also the Paquito. All of this, most of the six band choices from these two countries, actually is one of the power picks that we've witnessed from even from their matches, even from the first that they met, even through the playoffs. Your suggestion of, suge of a Frederick actually works into the first phase because Philippines right now has the advantage of the first pick. Will they go for the utility? Will they go for the heal? Oh. Yo, yes! Wow. Baksha, a favorite as well. We've seen different countries use this meta. And this is just amazing. You take out the Eve, but there's one thing also is considered on the table. You have the region, you have the slow. But on the response, look at that. Kanata and Brody right away, taken by Indonesia. Okay. This is kind of a surprise that Baksha was picked up first, but still, statistically, you know, given the how he's performed up in the playoffs especially, it makes sense, right? There's clearly a, an angle here for the Philippines, but the response is, I think this is great. This is what I was talking about before we even saw this draft pop up. Give the Brody over here to Sakin, right? We know the way that Brody works in the gold lane. You just need even an item, man. For the most part, one item, mostly two. And then you can start really to pop off, especially just getting the marks off, torn apart memory. And then you pair it up with a Kadita here, that is a great start because now you have threat to control that early game, hopefully snowball in the mid or even your gold lane if you can, and let it scale from there. Well, speaking of sale, good catch though with the Valentina. Getting an advantage off of this ultimate from the Kanata on the burst. Yes, you mentioned about this Brody, how it's so being effective by not having a first, ha but having a great lane on the gold. But with this, we have seen the performance back then on the XP on the X Borg, still making great waves from the back line of protection of each team that has its composition, having a great stronghold. Actually, this is a complete answer of the meta right now in Yash. I'm wondering too here, you know, as we, this is the first phase done, now we go back to banning for the second phase here. Both teams still having two to lock down. Now, if we're just looking at the lineup alone, you know, for Philippines, they're covering the bases early on. They've got the jungle. They've got to this Valentina to allow them to steal some of these ultimates from Indonesia the way they see fit. It could even be, honestly, Rough Wave's last insanity is already good, right? If you want to go ahead and take an ultimate, we'll see what is left. My surprise too is that, yeah, Novaria hasn't been picked up yet. We'll see what kind of bands that come through. The Angela is there, right? This is another pick. Sir, Angela Florin that has popped Your up constantly for a lot of these teams wanting to go the sustainability route. And right now, it might be the focus, right? Focus on the roam options for Indonesia. Focus on those for the Philippines. Good ban on the Fanny, though. With having a sustain, with having a great amount of reach and even spell buff for this Terizla, you don't want that Fanny just trying to poke and burst you down early game. If you're up against a Baksha, you, you have more ways to even sustain that. But you don't want that slow. You don't want that delayed progression if you want to get tanky and, and if you want to have that HP AOE-based damage. So this is covering tracks right now on what is the great counter for their own signature or strong picks. But for the Angela, though, good point on the uh, roamers as well. It's becoming more of an attention. Yeah. What is the roamers of Chivalry Philippines and Indonesia for this one? They ban out the Clint as a favorite. The high noon favorite right here in Yash. Even an early game. Kinda, yeah, it's Still a great start. Noon. Yeah, it is. It swelled. <laughs> <laughs> it feels it's like up. it. Yeah, it feels <laughs> like it. With now having a banning out the Angela, Philippines had the idea like they might actually put the export onto the EXP, and even Indonesia can take the Lancelot for themselves. That's a good eye ban there for the Lancelot. Solid choices here. And again, uh, I have to correct myself, Novaria was banned out, so that option wasn't available. Now I'm wondering, you know, how we're so used to seeing it picked up. How does that change the course of the game? Fredrin going to be locked in here. 
Now for Indonesia, great option, right? I, I would still say you can actually flex these as well. We have seen export go in the jungle before, but most likely, yeah, XP lane to deal with this Terizla here. Fredrin locked in to deal with the Bakja. You have that utility jungler now. And your main focus is to emulate what we saw Saudi Arabia do yesterday, man. Like I said, Tarzan had an amazing uh, experience in the jungle against the Philippines. And if that means taking and contesting those early objectives, like those first turtles that come up, that will give you the great start that you need. So right now, it looks like Indonesia is putting a lot of their cards in the early game burst potential, but also control, right? They need to contest those objectives early on. Okay, good pickup though with this. Claude and the Grok secured the marksman for Ricardiano. Good knockup as well. And forced out resource for uh, for this Grok. This Frederin, though, on to the statistics back on our stats on how we started in Yash 2023. The blue side, or either the red side, is much more likely as having an incre increased win rate for this Frederin. You've mentioned about utility, you've mentioned about sustain, and having the burst for this. Wow. And first time around, okay. Indonesia brings something out on the table. The Diggy, which is a great hero for their own composition, having the Fred and having the Brody, even for the Karita. You have immunity now for the CCs and yeah. ultimates that they can get from Philippines. I would say that's clutch. That's a clutch pick because of the fact that if you just look at the first three picks for the Philippines, they're going for CC, right? They're gonna go and try to stun, knock people up here, slow them down, but having this Diggy on Vin will alleviate some of that pressure, right, with the time's journey. So that is a great, final pick here that typically we haven't seen too much of, right? We've seen him banned once, maybe, popped up in the group stage maybe once, but relatively we haven't seen him. Well, now it's game time. Almost in a few seconds, we're about head to the land of dawn. This is the grand finals that we're about to witness. A best of five today. Once again, it's Philippines versus Indonesia. Facing once again in the grand finals of the World Esports Championships. Who is going to take the first point out of the series? Okay. We'll see how they start this game. A lot of the times, like we said, you know, if it's your first time watching MLBB, early game is, you know, for these first few minutes, you're gonna see some poking happening here and there, but really the, the job, oh man, Cerezo already taking quite a bit of damage. He's gonna get hit, oh, I don't think he's gonna survive that first blood already drawn by the Philippines here. Arc Angel with the rotation and our spawns onto the Terizla of Canon. Meanwhile, up top here, Saken and Vin. We have two Romors, we have two Marksmans aiding this gold lane. Onto the visit of uh, Arc Angel down bottom, actually aided more to decrease the Faraga armor of Cerezo right away. This is one thing that you don't want if you're up against a Terizla. You want to have the armor, you want to have that soak. But right now, onto the bottom lane, still the same thing happening. Yeah, still pressure being put on here, right? As I was saying, both teams, another. Another kill in the bottom lane against Cerezo. That is tough. He's now 0-2. I'm getting to the point where I'm trying to say, you know, Philippines might be looking for some pressure to get some resources out. I didn't think two kills this early on leading into that first turtle here. It looks like they want to ha have a response. Super Ken and Moreno both making their way here. Four members of Indonesia now focusing on this top side. Archangel here to respond. They can't find anything. And Turtle just coming up here very soon. You can already see Saison getting in position. Now with the delay on to Cerezo, on to Deaths here. No ultimate available ready for team fights. Saison has good advantage of clearing or getting more of their AoE here, or even the Quadrant on how to get this first objective. Meanwhile, we have Super Ken as well, trying to get in for the action. Okay, Super Ken, he wants to fight this with the Retribution. It's gonna come down to it. He does grab the turtle, now has to stay alive. Appraiser's Wrath comes through, there's the last Insanity. Super Ken goes down, the Flicker comes out too. Still gonna be looking for Sace on a couple hits away. Moreno, can he grab it? He rolls away, somehow surviving. Cerezo falls again, and Philippines still on the board. Indonesia only able to get the turtle. Okay. They're willing to trade that. Philippines is willing to give up the first turtle up against Indonesia, but in that team fight, they disabled Suriza right away. But one thing also that was concerned there was how will they sustain 
the damage. And looking by the items of the progress right now, we're looking at four tough boots present and warrior boots for the marksman. Rick Ford, Katiana for the Philippines. On the other hand, if we're looking at the marksman progress right now, Blade of Hap Disease is already present for Brody. You've mentioned it earlier how is this item pickup is so valuable even starting early game i say this time around a vin could actually have a great rotation once if he gets more vision for his team especially for a diggy he's not letting go of his gold lane just yet because of the pressure that was given down bottom on exp well again you know just given the fact that in the xp lane that's at this point the lane is one right for Kenon. Going against Cerezo, 0-3 on this x Borg, who's relatively, you know, going to have a hard time anyway, it, it's tough to deal with, you know, and as Kanon gets more of these items, hold on to the top side, they already put in the pressure. Super Ken there now to help Vin really low here. Archangel might be looking to follow up, not going to be able to find it though. And you can feel the tension in the top lane, man, right? They're just going to focus there because, again, that XP lane, they just got to leave Cerezo here to his biddings at this point, right? Big thing, though, even though he's 0-3, Last Insanity still plays a part in a lot of these skirmishes, a lot of these team fights to get them down low, hopefully on the health, and then have some follow-up. Sokken hasn't gone down yet, so he should be able to farm up pretty well on this Brody. Second turtle now up. Okay, second turtle is up. Second objective. Edo Khan is looking to book on Cerezo. All right, they're going to fight for it. Less than half health here. Kanon zoning them out the best he can. Unigo holding on a little bit longer. Time to journey comes out as well. Turtle secured by Super Ken again. Gets the objective. Can they get the kill? Rough Waves will not find the connection they're looking for. Archangel using his own last insanity. Cerezo has to flick around. Vin's going to fall. Still looking for a second kill here. One hit away, and they put the pressure once again, but Indonesia grabs the turtle. That is a good distance retreat onto the ultimate that Cerezo was going to give for the side of Philippines. That was a good initiation. That was a clapback. We were expecting more that he could actually, that Arkhangel actually would get the ultimate of the rough waves. But in the last part that we saw a few seconds ago, he took the ultimate of Cerezo. The complete additional burnout and having on level 7 with being a Valentina is a massive clapback in terms of those skirmishes that you actually could lose up against the, the composition of Philippines right now. Yeah, it was nice to see that, you know, and still another setup here. They finally get on the board. Unigo going to fall, but there's the response. They're going back for him. Miranda will fall. Vin has to get out of there. He's got the time's journey still. So Indonesia gets on the board here. The kill going over to Moreno. That should help them a little bit, but this early game is definitely a struggle. Meanwhile, though, because of this objective taking from Indonesia, they've managed, despite these kills over on the Philippines, they've managed to keep the gold lead relatively okay, right? A thousand or so gold ahead. Yeah, Moreno was, was the first down to go after he was using the ultimate, and that was just a go time for Philippines to have a takedown for Indonesia. You mentioned how they're just keeping up with the objectives, they're keeping up with the economy. I said they have the eyes on, or even tabs for how they can get an advantage for Indonesia, even for the items. Philippines is building on the items right now to have a counter. Look at that, Finn oh. flickered out. Lin's got to flicker her out. There's the time journey of their own. Super Ken can't get the Brazers Rast off. He was looking for the kill. Not able to get it because he got stunned, knocked up there. Now the rest, Sakin, waiting for the moment. He doesn't have the torn apart memory, though, just yet. Gonna get these marks off. Miranda gonna go in, finding another kill. The flicker comes through, still on the follow up. Could be in trouble. Only one down for the Philippines. Make it two. Double kill for Sakin. Requitiano joining the fight along with Saison. Gonna push them back now. Turtle still going to be worked on by Super Ken. He's not worried about it. That looks like it might be the third one waiting for this retribution. He's got it. Three turtles for Indonesia. And now the jungler is just battling it out, but they're back on the board and they swing things in their favor. Moreno on the right target, taking down Unigo first and Cannon, disabling the penalty zone combo, disabling that knockup, the wall charge, the wall from the initiation once they started to get that turtle. Now looking by the items right here, we're looking at first to look at the elegant gem also being built up slowly to get his, again, uh, clock of destiny. But now with the priority of the genius wand, decreases the magic defense of Philippines right now. That's what they keep on bursting oh. over and over again. The wild charge flicker combination comes in, but there's four members here. Unigo cannot escape that. He knew it will fall right in front of the turret. And once again, Indonesia finding a win where they needed to. They're going to force Rekutiano back here. And as you were breaking down the items there, OSX, you saw Sokin is where he needs to be. As soon as that Torn Apart memory is up, you can expect them to put pressure. Saison now 
Cannon's gonna get knocked up here. The rough wave's already gonna be used. There they go. Time's Journey has to come out defensively, trying to keep them alive. Flicker comes through. Sokken's still alive, too. Gets the torn apart memory off, and they're still going. Time's Journey of their own for Archangel, forcing them back. It's a lot of poking back and forth. No one goes down, but all those resources expended. Yeah, good frontline defense. There four members from Indonesia just took a hold and just prevented Philippines from taking down Socket. He forced out a flicker out of that Brody. Yeah. But one thing that they're considering here is to lower down the proc of the Blade of Heptasy. So as you all know who's watching us for the first time right here, two item pick up of a Brody right now. Having the passive of an ambush amplifies more of the damage if the Brody is not engaged or not being touched by any damage for a few seconds. But that is trying, they're trying to prevent that. So with that, Super Ken is just also just clearing more of the waves here to get more items for Cerizo. Again, he fall down three deaths in the early yep. game. He wants to get back up on his feet. And not only that, but that he just picked up the Ice Queen wand. That's crucial for him, right, on this uh, export pick because his job is just to slow people down and even get that last insanity off. He has the immortality, so he's got a little bit of extra defense here as well. Yeah. They're going to put themselves in a good position here for the Lord. Yeah, speaking of positioning, we have Super Genin Cerise zoning out two, three. Hey, son. Reno, though, he's, he's going to be in for trouble. The There's the last insanity. They're forcing him back. Two times during he's being used here. Lord is still going to be worked on. Super Ken just forcing the Philippines back alongside his teammates here. They've asserted their position. Philippines might have to give this one away. Recutiano might look for an entry himself. Unigo as well. Wild charge, but it's too late. Super Ken grabs the Lord. Vin will fall. But here's the focus. Unigo going to get knocked up here. Looking for the kill. Recutiano goes in with a blazing duet. Wow. The wind of nature, though. Moreno goes down. They're still looking. Double kill for Arc Angel. Able to grab another one. Super Ken and Cerizo on the run. It could be dire, though. The penalty zone comes out. Super Ken left to his devices, appraiser's wrath, but falls in the jungle. They get the Lord, but at the cost of a couple lives. Requitiano, P-H-I Requitiano with an entry. Mind you, when he wanted to go up front, up four against Indonesia, he didn't have the wind of nature yet. That was just damage building up. And when he knew that four ultimates were, were down in Indonesia. That was the time to use that blazing duet right on to four. He has the Demon Hunter Sword, he has the Golden Staff. And just by that, he has extra damage to peel. And the fall of Canon and even Arkel was so beautiful to see. And that is just complete reinforcement. A quick response from Philippines. Look at that. Arc Angel getting that time journey for himself. That's proving to be really valuable for a lot of these team fights depending on what ultimate he takes, but Indonesia playing around that power spike they had by getting that Lord. It was only the first one of the game. It made quick work, right? Philippines made quick work of it, but still, Indonesia is doing it in terms of objectives. They've got the three turtles. They got the first Lord. Philippines is the one that has to figure out how to get these neutral objectives against Indonesia, because this is where teams usually lack against the Philippines, right? This portion of the game is where they really slip up and take things in control. But it's Indonesia that's doing it. And now they focus on these tier twos, a huge flicker. Penalty zone from Kanon with the time's journey able to help them out. Can they follow up through it? Torn apart memory already going to be used. Rough waves as well. No one falling. Unigo goes in with a wild charge, finds Moreno. He will fall. It's a pickup with the response from Super Ken and Cerizo looking for their own response. Kanon falls to the appraiser's wrath. Blazing Duet comes down two, two down, make it possibly three. He holds on with the Immortality, now gonna be popped. Can they get the kill here? He's still got the armor. Requitiano in trouble too, and he falls to Vin. It's a bloodbath here in the mid lane, three for three. That was a complete tug of war. The disengage, the initiation from Cannon with the flicker and parity zone initiated the go time of Philippines. One thing that they missed there is they were looking for a way to take down Moreno. That was a good wall charge by Uniga, but one thing they also were considering is how do you even catch Shaq? He was all over the distance. He was minding the gap, losing his ultimate at the right time. But one thing they, they had a way of to have to shut down three members of Indonesia there was, that was a complete disengage and uh, again a back and forth yeah it was a bloodbath man completely disengaging but now we're boiling down on the second the second objective of this game can i just say two great job for cerizo here again he had a rough early game oh and three he's made it back right and a lot of times it's just doing what he's doing 
getting that Ice Queen wand proc, slowing people down, using Last Insanity, they're going to force Philippines back again for the most part of this Lord take. They're trying to get this one locked down. It's half hell. Archangel with the time's journey of his own. Archangel just completely got the ultimate of the Diggy. Cerise's ultimate is up, but he oh. has no immortality. Good reset. Okay, there's a reset now on this Lord. I say in team fights advantage, Philippines has a window now to capitalize on, which they have for CC immunity and burst. Keep an eye on the positioning, Recutiano as well. They're trying to spot him out. He knows what his job is. It's to get a blazing duet off on multiple members here of Indonesia, putting the pressure on. But it's not going to happen yet. Say Sun trying to roll around here. They're not sure if they want to commit to the Lord just yet. It is about a third of the health here. Then Vin's in trouble. There's the blazing duet we were just talking about. Vin will fall. What's the response from them? Last Insanity popped as well. Socket in trouble. He goes down. It's a double kill. Both gold laners down here. The response is from Indonesia to keep going. Cannon in trouble. Has the immortality. Will be popped here. And they follow it up with a kill. Unigo can't do anything but watch as he falls. And now it's two versus three. Both junglers still up here. It is crucial. They can still fight with the retribution. Unigo goes in with a wild charge, trying to buy some time, trying to stall out Indonesia from taking this. Rough wave's gonna be utilized here. Seisun still being held back. Superkin now starting it up. They're waiting for the team to come up here. Last Insanity once again. Seisun will fall, and that means a Lord going in the hands here of Indonesia unless they can do something about it, but it doesn't look like it. They grab that one. I just got to command Indonesia for that border control. You have Cerizo, you have Vin, and you even have Moreno just looking up avenues on how will Philippines gain an entry on that Lord. Again, that objective, that major objective, going back on this replay, it was a back and forth. Yeah. The positioning of Rikavdiana was so crucial by just being in the death push. He managed to get Vin, he managed to get Saga. That was a double for the Frederick, gaining more advantage for takedowns. Oh, this is troublesome. They're going to lose the base mid turret here still gonna be worked on penalty zone is utilized they're waiting for the damage blazing do it comes through is it enough to make them fall here in the jungle immortalities multiple go off here but indonesia still fully Cerezo. forced here Cerizo in trouble couple hits away Woo! they force recutiano back and unigo falls arc and hell comes in for a double still looking for another moreno! but moreno somehow gets away with a sliver of health Wow, the tug of war continues. Three men down as well for these two countries. Ricardiano really knows how to start a party. That blazing duet going back on this replay once again in this short corner. Vin was trying to get a hold of his own ultimate. They were forced to retreat back in the side corner. This was Unigo can completely shine. He used the wall charge. He proc and forced out something on Super Ken. But most of the members of Indonesia having a slow slither of health as the damage of Rikuriano is piercing through in their defenses. But from that moment on, Philippines respected the hell out of the damage, even the defense of our uh, their own opponent against Indonesia. Look at the board. 16 to 16. At the 16 and a half minute mark, both these teams giving us a show in game one in this best of five grand final. You can see just how familiar they are with each other here. Yeah, speaking of familiarity, looking at all the items almost locked, well, locked in, we have two members of Philippines right now who has more sustain. You have Antiki Raz, you have Radiant Armor, sustaining more of the magic damage that Moreno has and always uh, for against Cerizo. He has the Ice Queen one for the slow though, but mostly as you can see on our screens, we're looking at four, three members who actually have more advantage in soaking up team fights. So you have, that's three Antiki Raz on our screens from Baksha, from Rock, even from Cannon. So more of this could actually initiate the fights, especially that we've seen from early game. You have that flicker old combo, you have Wave of Sin, you have Spell Vamp having a present for Cannon. So what they need right now is to see. They need to look at on how Indonesia is rotating because there's only one turret left for Philippines to defend. There's two problems. How do they get from the how do they get to the back line of Indonesia? How do they get to defend this base? But that is the answer. They have a claw, they have more ways to wave clear and also split. Mind you, that is still a threat in the late game. With that. Next lore now up here. Indonesia in position. Philippines really has to approach this. As you were saying, OSX, you know, they have the tools they need. 
and a lot of that is negated just by a term time journey so you almost have to just overlap things perfectly to get this team fight in your favor or it comes down to the positioning and the conceal play you know, speaking of conceal in position three members of the philippines right now eyeing on cerizo okay Rekutiana also making his way here. Cannon gonna go in, he jumps in with the penalty zone. Here comes Unigo looking for the wild charge. He has to wait, time's journeys, both teams gonna be used. Rekutiano finds the mark on the blazing duet, forcing them back. Cerizo still alive, but in the mid lane, they battle it out. Socket with a torn apart memory will not find a kill. Philippines stays healthy. Indonesia down one member. They can still contest the Lord here. If the Philippines grabs this Lord, they will surely march into the base of Indonesia. This is crucial for them. Yes, yeah, speaking of crucial, that backline entry from Cannon and Unigo is so effective for Gadiados and the Blazing Duet. But one thing that they're seeing here, we're seeing on our screens, Vin on this diggy is giving so much vision for Indonesia right now, even he falls down first. Super Ken getting in position. He knows what he's got to do here. They got to zone him out. Cannon again jumps in with a flicker. Penalty zone. Lord secured for the Philippines. They're turning it around here. Unigo goes in with a wild charge. Focusing on Sorizo, But in the backside, Rekutiano using that blazing duet. Firing off before he has to back out as well. They have the Lord. They can't fall here. Lord already up down the bottom side. Sun will fall. And Indonesia responds. The one for one but Lord secured for Philippines. Clearly getting that win. Two jungles fall down. Super Cannon and Saison. From that moment that Cannon initiated a flicker penalty zone, it was just the right corner for Unigo to utilize with the walls and the passive of Grok. Looking at this replay, the amazing entry of that Terizla onto two members, forced Indonesia to react, forced Cerizo to use that last insanity. But with the knockup of Unigo right onto the wall, on that corner, gave so much rate for the damage to pierce through, making Ricardiano so effective with the damage of the Blazing Duet. This is the prowess of winning condition of a Claude being present in the Philippines. Okay, here it is. They should be able to clear this. They're quite stacked on the items. They're zoning once again. Penalty zone comes through. They hold on to the turret. So despite that, Indonesia holds on with a great high ground defense. Given the situation, they're back at it. It's still over a minute and a half for that next floor to come up. It's up to these two teams to find wins. Now for Philippines, what did they get out of that Lord? They got a few turrets. They got a little space to work few with waves. now. Yeah, get, along gaining the map. more on the presence of having a push, having a great clear against Indonesia. Yes, they're slowly they're getting something out of it. This is the late game. This is the window of their own lineup. Late game composition, Claude, a walking, winning condition. Just in case they would need more extra damage. There's Archangel, there's also Cannon for the spell vamp. What we're trying to say here is they have more winning condition, as you said. Yeah. More tools, com tools almost complete. They can actually interchange more of the items now on how to counter sustain, how to counter movement speed, because in Vision, and even for team fights, Indonesia needs more ways of discovering where will the penalty zone will land. Where will Unigo come from? Look at this. Oh. The control. Look at the control over the map right now. What the Philippines is doing. Look at that poke damage, right? That's just from Rekatiano. A couple shots. Super Ken's got to respect it. He does have the immortality. But, you know, good point here, OSX, because at the same time, like we saw from that previous highlight, Kenon had a great flicker penalty zone combination on this Terizla, but unfortunately, you know, timing-wise, Rekutuana was a little bit too far. The rest of the team was a little bit too far. If it happened a little bit differently, that timing, that down to a couple seconds, could really change the course of a lot of those fights. Yeah, speaking of changing course, in team fights, if you miss the chance for a setup for, the, for Indonesia's lineup, they have Moreno, you have the Kadet that could actually evade by using that rough waves. This is one thing that you have if you have this kind of lineup. Either you use it against your enemy team or they force it against you. But look at it right now, we have Indonesia eyes on the Lord. But Saiso is not letting go on vision as well. Yeah, look at the placing. You have to keep an eye on the map here. Positioning crucial. Both junglers are just going to stay around this Lord. Buying time. Anything that really stands out about these two teams, Philippines and Indonesia, is the fact that they've mastered what we call this Lord dance. Both teams just trying to basically gauge each other. Who's going to commit? There's the conceal from Unigo. The rest of Indonesia also making their way. They had the information they needed. 
and they know that that conceal is down. The surprise factor is not there anymore. Still going to be working on it. That's the reset. And this is the strength of having a Gronk. He's going to use that Guardian's Barrier to go ahead and reset the Lord here. Now both teams know five versus five around the Lord, the most crucial one in the game. This is that fourth one. It gets much tougher to deal with the more Lords they go through. So now, once again, they find themselves at a stalemate. They know it's each other so well that if one jungle is just showing up in this objective, some point of the game actually might happen or even might have a push. But looking at how they're so experienced in this kind of challenges, they know what to feel and what to decide. Sakin already used that torn apart memory. They might try to buy a little bit more time here for that to be up. Both junglers still at it, dancing in front of this Lord pretty much, dealing with it. They do have immortalities as well. So they have to be careful how they decide to do this. Cannot gonna jump in. That's what we're talking about. Requitiano following up with a blazing duet. And in a split second, they'll collapse on Indonesia. Sakin in trouble. Couple shots away. It's a disaster for them around this Lord. Sorizo flickers out defensively. Seiso's going to chase him down. Rolls in, looking for that immortality. Will not be able to find it. And they have to go back to this Lord. But Indonesia does not want them to just take it freely. But it looks like they call it back. Give it to them, and we just defend. Cannon with the Turizla, the element of surprise. Forced out ultimates out of Indonesia. The two most crucial crucial pickoffs just happened. Sakin and Vin. Oh, I think they're gonna press the situation. Wild charge into the turret they go. Moreno can't find the connection he's looking for. Holding on here they do. Requitiano gonna force them back with his own blazing duet. BMI's back to safety. And they press them back. Ultimates are online except for Moreno here. Indonesia, can they defend this? They should have a full force to deal with this Lord once again. It will most likely charge up into that turret here. So slowly but surely, Philippines gaining ground for this game number one. They're gonna hold it here, and Indonesia hangs on. 25 minutes, we're in the ultra late game. It's a long death. game. Timers are much longer. One crucial pickoff either from these two countries, once they spot on someone out isolated on the map, that is the advantage of having a disable and the power of their late game composition. Now we're looking at the defense of Indonesia right now onto the base. We're gonna see some items be switched up here. We're looking at the power. We're looking at the defense of Moreno. He, he now has the Winter Truncheon, able to force, able to, able to have an invulnerability. This for is tough. Even burst down from Philippines. The tough part here is the fact that you have everybody item locked. They're gonna be switching items, like you mentioned, right? And it comes down to these micro decisions. In that, in that sense, immortalities, right? Once they're expended, you're gonna expect them to pick up these winter truncheons or these wind of natures, flip things out, even those rose gold meteors, right? And at that time, especially dealing with Moreno, you just have to dodge that initial burst for the most part. But right now, what it's looking like, both teams having some of their bases exposed, Indonesia's turrets a couple hits away, this is where it gets a little dicey. Because what we've seen before, too, is not so much focus just on the Lord at this point, right? This is gonna be the fifth Lord. It's almost game ending for most, most matches, right? We're nearing that time. But not only that, but when teams focus so much, they're hyper-focused on dealing with that Lord, the split push comes through. So we have to, they have to keep an eye on that here for Indonesia. Things could happen all over the place, all over the map. Good point there about the split push. We're looking at Salkin, we're looking at Ricotiano. Damages right now is actually showing up on the roof, but one thing also saw right there when he, when he had to hover on the items, we have two members of Philippines has the Queen's Wings. Probably countering out the damage reduction of Indonesia's damage right now that could be so high because with the Brody and even for Cerizo, you have more ways to even compensate for that just in case for Tifa just happen. As you mentioned about the map being all things can be considered. Yeah. Split push, actually diversion. It's present for these two MLBB giants that actually keep on experience even in, in their own leagues. So it's so nice to see that there's a lot of tension. A lot of surprises can happen. Wow. 
But look at that. There are some folks, so much immortality right now on our screens. Yeah, they're already going to force Zayson, right? He So off the Lord here. Got to keep an eye out again on the placements. Specifically, what's going on at the bottom side of the map. Moreno also trying to find some... This might work. Whoa. It does. It at least gets the immortality. Still has to follow up. Trees are going to go in with the last Satani Arc on Hell. In trouble, but he has the Winter Tronchin. Cannon can't help him. He falls, but look at the bottom side. This is what we were talking about, the split push they might be going for. They still have to deal with here. The penalty zone will not be able to find the mark. Revenge Strike comes through. Cannon, can he salvage this fight in the top side? Meanwhile, in the base, Vin fell. Requitiano is still there, but good thing Sakin went back. So the base is handled. Saison and Cannon trying to get out of here. They're going to lose their jungle. That's big for Indonesia here. They managed the split push. They won that fight around the Lord. And now they can decide, do we go for it? Three down for the Philippines. Three crucial takedowns with just the presence of Moreno, Super Cannon, Vin being on the base and being on the side of the Lord. They were able to sustain that burst. They were able to sustain that CC coming in from Cannon, putting the right amount of people with the burst here. Oh, Cannon's trying to hold off as well. Cannon trying to buy time. He needs a lot of it. It's him versus the world right now. Unigo up here. He's going to go ahead, try to block some of these minions. Immortality will be popped. Wild charge. He's holding on. He doesn't have it just yet. He cleared the minions, though. For now, is it enough time? Arc and Hell now up. Can they defend this by themselves? The base is going to be worked on by Sakin. And it looks like Indonesia will draw first blood in a long game here in a best of five against the Philippines. And most of the things that that's prioritized here on the EXP lane, it's the Uranus, a Faramis, or even a Lapu Lapu. So this time around in game number two, we could either see a switch up, we could either see a different one from the book, as you've mentioned, they could either use something different in this kind of threat. Okay, so here we go, right? Game two draft. Indonesia now on the blue side. They're going to get the priority pick. Philippines on the red. The bands here, too, uh, it's a little bit different, right, from what we've seen at least uh, here and there. The Brody's <laughs> actually going to be banned out. First thing on his mind. Yeah, because... Uh, I don't know, he's got to be pretty high up there in terms of gold laner statistics for this tournament for ISF WEC. Uh, we've seen so many great performances on Brody. Also, even though they had just used it, they decide to ban out this Kadita as well. Let's Respect see what the last also for Argon Hell's yeah. hero. Let's see what the last ban for the Philippines is. Okay, they ban out the Eve, they ban out the Paquito. So mostly uh, either, well, the Joy was not a good option. For most, for of most the teams. teams, yeah, most teams. But uh, I believe I, this is. I think let's just let it go. It could work for and either of these that, teams. That here this doesn't exist. I mean, uh, they could make it work again. Like, just yeah, See? historically, <laughs> yeah, just don't mind the yeah. joy. Historically, joy, yeah, didn't work out very well. Especially, it was Indonesia that actually drafted it, but uh, a couple times I think it was for Super Ken in the jungle. But instead, they just opt for Novaria, who is open. And, you know, even before we started the series here, um, OSX, the Novaria is a signature pick, I would say. You know, that almost all teams, but Indonesia specifically and the Philippines, they love this pick. So if it's left open, you're safe to take it because not only do you have some flexibility with it, you don't necessarily have to play it in the mid lane. We have seems, seen teams play it as a roam which could work. Now, Is are we expecting, you know, Vin to play this? Not so much, right? But still, it's a possibility, and it's something that the Philippines has to consider here. You know what's a possibility? What An is? assassin first pick. They're, for Philippines? They could do it, but uh, they're still sticking with uh, with Rizla. But okay, still the same thing. First two that we've seen for game number one, Claude and uh, the Terizla. I was yeah. having a thing on my head, because in the game number one, they battled more uh, the assassin picks, yeah. and mostly they don't want that uh, kind of a burst damage that they can receive early game. There was a suspect coming in from Indonesia that they wanted to see the draft from game number one, but this is a good one for uh, Philippines. They have taken out, uh, they've taken the Turizla with them, taken the Claude once again, and uh, pairing it up. This actually could have an advantage if they use or have the Valentina on their side. Just having a, re a great of a counter of using an ultimate out of Indonesia. We'll see if they, you know, if they want to go that route. If they want to lock that in, it's almost something that we typically see. Again, like mid lane for the most part, that's where you see the most consistency in terms of hero picks. 
right? And now we'll have to kind of ponder exactly what they want to do facing off in the mid lane. But meanwhile, Indonesia, let's talk about the Baksha, the Beatrix. Baksha, solid choice. Again, you're looking for that mobility. You have this built-in passive as you with you as well to not only be quite tanky, but also to deal with some of the regeneration coming out, the sustainability from the Philippines. And Beatrix, just one of those marksmen that fits the bill for anything, right? She literally has a gun for every situation, and that's the way that her kit works. You can just pick a gun for, you know, if you want to do solid single target damage, AOE damage, and really covering fire for your team. You know what's a good AOE? What is? Barso could show up here. For Philippines? Yeah. If you're up against a Beatrix, that's a great counter on how to just reach the back line and enforce something out of Indonesia. Will they consider the Valentina or even the Farsa, though? Because they have the XP, they have the marksman. There you go! Your team is you're, you're doing great. Yeah, man. So that's a, bit, a great counter there, <laughs> as, as we see. So that's a good, you have the AOE. Isn't it only the Philippines that has picked up the Farsa? I yeah, think only so, for like, Argon Hill. Right? Yeah. So, you know, good choice, good call. And the fact that, you know, they let this uh, Valentina through. You know, what I'm wondering, too, is what if, right? What if Indonesia, depending on how these last couple bands come out, what if they're like, all right, well, they got the far, so now we want actually the Valentina. Let's go ahead and park Novaria in Vin's hands, take up the Valentina. So we also have a feathered airstrike. Now it's even worse, right? Because you're dealing with artillery, you're dealing with poke. That could happen here. So let's see exactly how these last couple bands come through. That was the Lancelot taken out from Indonesia. Great choice because the jungle for Philippines is not up yet. And if you remember back on what, day two, I think it was, Philippines played this Lancelot with the Impura Rage emblem. And that was, uh, it was a great, it was a great way to play it, right? It's a different yeah. factor than the killing spree, which we usually see. So um, solid choice there. Last ban from the Philippines is gonna be that x -Borg. They're tired of dealing with what they had to the previous game, you right? just need to respect them. They have to respect it, they take it out. Okay, we have the XP lane ban and also the Angela. They were kind of sensing it. Indonesia sensing it like they ban out the Angela. They might go for a sustain. But one Sir, thing that we, we, that we actually see, your see, the good. assassin. I was kind of feeling it. I was kind of feeling that either Philippines would prioritize on that, but it, mo it was mostly onto the XP as you've mentioned early right. on. So no assassins. What's good here for Philippines as well, they can actually take the Frederick again. Good pair with the Charisma, good pair, and also a counter for the Beatrix. I say it's still a good pick. Frederick for Philippines. You have the taunt, you have the tankiness. It's kind of like the, it's usually what teams just go when they're against Baksha, you know? Yeah, but not regularly on the second phase. Yeah. <laughs> on the picking. Uh, well, like we've seen it maybe a couple times, but if you want to be a little risky, again, you're down just 1-0 in the series, you still have plenty of time. Do you want to go with that risk reward? You know, you could pick up a assassin in the jungle if you really want to, if you really want to compete Value that way. Me but they don't do it, they pick up the Fredrin, they Perfect. opt for that utility, that safety. Again, you're up, uh, you're up against a Baksha. The downside of Assassins into a Baksha especially is obviously, it's gonna be really difficult for you to have some of those prolonged Lord fights or even Turtle fights early on, right? Because mm -hmm. you'll easily get whittled down. So a solid choice here. Let's see what the answer is from Indonesia. Like we said, we still have to see exactly where this Novaria is fitting in. We already have the jungle, we already have the gold lane. We need the XP and the roam or mid option for Indonesia. If they end up picking up the Valentina, that will be an interesting composition that we've seen actually work really well before. Plus Glue is good though. Glue for the XP lane. Glue sure. for the XP for Indonesia is still good, but they're oh. going for the Minotaur. Okay, knock up, yeah, but it's able for the Claude. Trying to get the precision. But okay. 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 Different way. We have EX this is that lineup I was telling you about. OSX. The tanky boys. The beefy boys. Like this is this is it, right? Because beefy boys and a cow. Well, literally, yes. There is a. We're in Yash. Yes. And here's the thing. We only saw Minotaur once, I think it was, which was yesterday in the hands of Maro. Mm -hmm. Right. And we did not get to see how useful a Minotaur could be because yeah, he had some great you know, setups, flicker ins with the Minoan Fury, but at that point when they were utilizing it, there was no follow up, right? But this time it's it's in the hands here of once again some of the best players in the world, if not the best. So now how Kufra, does this get rounded out from Kufra, the Philippines? Atlas. Yeah, they might want to go with something also tankier here to help them round this I out. Wow. Oh. Not what I was expecting. They go with a Rome Valir. 
There's two mages. Interesting. Okay. You have this able. You have a complete debuff. You have a complete pushback on this cow, on, the, on this minotaur, and also for the grok. Even for the boxers. There's a lot of ways to secure the board. Because that was the problem game number one. Yeah. How do you protect that? How, how do you have the border control if you're against, uh, up against a lineup that's so strong on damage that is building up on the late game? I think this is a good path again for Philippines. Yeah. And it's, and it's ha having a good jump start for the early game. Paired with Farsa, paired with Valir, I think that's good. The only thing that, you know, Valir is great because of just the way that his kit works, his mechanics. He's throwing fireballs. You know, you land a couple in a row, you get a stun off, you can push the enemy team back. And, you know, you really have to be on point for the most part with your fireballs and everything. But also, once that kit is up, you're kind of just running around for the most part, right? So it really has to scale into this game. Yeah, Valir, in a way, is a little bit of a risky choice, but we'll find out, right? We are going to get a little bit longer here to talk about this because Valir is not typically a hero you see pop up. Usually, teams do like to pick this up, though, if they're dealing even with a Terizla, for example, because of, you know, the animation with the penalty zone is so, like, slow motion yeah, that he just torrents them away, pushes them away. He has a heavy hammer. As we, yeah, if you break down the animation of a Terizla, you, you just need to make that surprise. Yeah. That is always about the flicker combo that you, you were mentioning, because if that flicker is gone, you lose the element. You lose the surprise. Oh, surprise. Yeah, the oh, surprise. surprise. Either right? you yeah. use your swinging hammer to just use it for either evade or escape, or even poke down the members of uh, your, of, of the enemy. But but just having the right amount of a uh, burst, who's actually or can be a great way of uh, of a strength in surprises. Well, Canon's doing a great work with that. So let's just hand it to him. We're looking over the same two picks from Philippines, and for the side of his head of Indonesia, beefy boys. Yeah, this is going to be stain. it's going to be hard though, man, because if you just again looking at that lineup, right? The not only the fact that Indonesia's lineup is very tanky, very durable. Uh, the the same can be said for the Philippines to an extent, right? Having this Fredra and having this Terizla, but really that's it. You know, on the other side, Indonesia not only are they going to be able to peel, they ha they can peel easily for that Beatrix for Sakin here. For but something. they have multiple options to initiate these fights if they want to, right? So if you're if you're really worried here about that CC setup potential, it's the Philippines because of, again, you have a wild charge to work against from Indonesia. You just have Baksha rolling around looking for sandwich plays, and that's what they usually do. Teams that pick up Baksha early on, not only are they focused on obviously getting the objectives and whatnot, but it's to put pressure in these lanes, top, bottom, sandwich them in into a turret, and then usually pick up a kill, right? Not to mention they have a Navario man who we have seen time and time again with just the way you use that Astral Echo, the Astral Recall, you're poking people down. You can really play around that. And one thing that I'm really looking forward to seeing is how this Minotaur works this time in the hands of Vin. Because, like I said, we saw it once yesterday. Didn't work out, right? It was, it was, the, it was there in essence, but the follow-up wasn't yeah. there. Yeah, follow-up. I think now they have great uh, answers for, uh, for this Minotaur. You have more ways to actually hit those even pixels for the knockoff of the Minotaur One Fury with the aid of the Astral Recall and Astral Echo. But if you're talking about how will they deplete down the defenses of Indonesia's lineup right now, having the Baksha, the Grok, even the Minotaur, I think it all boils down how will the progress of the two mage heroes of Philippines will do in early game. You have the poke of the feather airstrike uh, hitting level four. Yeah. And with this Valir alone, you can actually visit more of the lanes. You actually get more vision. And you have more advantage of, of disabling once you get the pass or you got hit of one of the ultimates. Well, we're jumping back into the game here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Game number two. Indonesia drawing first blood in this grand final best of five. Can the Philippines even it out? You're going to see them really try to put pressure here early on, utilizing this Valir pick. That's what you see Unigo doing here. He has to be landing these fireballs and everything else. But at the same time, you really you have a couple defenses, right? And you are quite squishy. You can see it right here, already half health. It's got to be careful. Yeah, Valir roam early on. You need to be wary of your distance. You need to be wary of your spacing because at some point, early game, Super Ken and Vin with this kind oh. of pair up, you could actually poke a lot out of this uh, out of this Valir. 
So they need to be careful as well. That's the knock up from Vin. Using the Gagas of Blast, yeah, pass it front, hit him down. Fireball's connecting on the side zone. Hitting level four. Will he be able to make it for the Appraisers Rat? Just continuing that spam. Sizer just completely peeling off slowly members of Indonesia. Again, these burst fireballs, right? Are crucial. Cannon, Cannon dropping low. He will, he still, oh. will he be still able to escape this one? Cannon falls down. Cerizo takes the first blood. Man, it's a, it's a revenge, right? It's Cerizo getting the first blood here in that XP lane, dealing with Cannon on this Tarizla. So, you know, and to be honest, honestly, we haven't seen too much XP lane Gronk, right, for the most part. It, before, it was rather popular in a, in a lot of other tournaments, but it's kind of fallen off a little bit. We're going to take a look at the replay here. This is kind of how it started again. That's just his death, but it was a well-played uh, maneuver from Indonesia. Now with the first turtle up. Looks like Vin going to be caught up by the stunt. Now with the Astro Recall being placed, Art Angel secures the kill with a Fellow Airstrike. Unigo trying to hold in with the border with the reason of the turtle here. Philippines is looking forward more securely or securing the first objective of this game by just getting that purple out. Both these gold laners gonna pretty much size each other up in this early game. Turtle still gonna be worked on here, right? It looks like Philippines wants to go for it, but the response from Indonesia. Cannon dropping down low on HP. There's a knock up onto the follow up of Cerezo's wild charge. Two men bouncing off on the air. Vin, Vin takes down one. Indonesia completely bouncing back with his skirmish. Super Cannon Cerezo takes down Tyson. Follow up here with the Federal Strike for Argon Hell. Will it make it through the peel? Completely getting that objective. Indonesia winning that team fight. Yeah, so. Again, it's still relatively even, right? But Turtle was secured there by Super Ken. He's been pretty on point for these objectives early on. Great initiation. You know, even Cerizo using that wild charge. Great Appraiser's Wrath response. But you can see there's a lack of damage right now. And yes, these are two magic damage dealers. But they still need time to scale up a little bit, right? Right now, economy-wise, pretty even. Nothing too big happening. That is Rakutiano picking up a DHS, though. He's got the Demon Hunter sword. He's not letting go of Cannon right now. Using the penalty zone counters, trying to slow him down with a turret. He's not right under the turret. He flickers in. Wow. Cannon trying to evade. He's trying to micro and right onto the turret. Still sustaining that we have protection of his own outer turret energy shields. He lives. OK, again, you can see the focus on these XP lanes, right? They want to slow them down as much as possible. And that's the great thing about, anyway, Tarizla, right? This XP lane is because of his passive, the body of Smith. When he gets lower, right, he gets a little more tankier. It's harder to kill him. And at the same time, he's got Brave Smite, the emblem there that lets him, when he uses his abilities, he gains some health back. So that's what's making it so hard for them to capitalize on that kill in the bottom lane. So as we see Indonesia put pressure there, for how long though, right? How long can they continue to put that? Because at the end of the day, Canon, just like Cerizo previously, even if you start out slow, at some point, mid game, late game, your job is literally to be a front man and also hopefully land those penalty zones. But you can still see pressure being put here on Canon. Eyes on XP, Cerizo and Ken. Super Ken just poking out, poking out Canon to just go out of the tone turret. Now, second turtle is up, though. Astro Recall and Echo connecting to Saison and Unigo. Indonesia's present as well. Finn trying to use and utilize more of those knockups. Saison has Finn Ken again. disabled, but Finn as well trying to hold on with a foul up cannon here in Cerizo. Trying to eye on taking this one. Moreno, though, trying to walk in from behind. Archangel still spamming all the way. Looking that damage coming from that appraiser. But Saison secures the kill. Okay. A response for that, but still giving up these turtles here, or at least being taken from under their noses. Indonesia doing a great job securing early objectives. Can they maintain it? Gold, economy-wise, pretty even. Interesting pickup, too, for Cerizo. Picking up that Sea Halberd already this early on. That was his first item that he rushed here. So his job is literally to reduce some of that sustainability, some of that healing that's going on for the Philippines here. And they're off to a good start encountering some of that. Now, Philippines, on the other hand, you know, neither team has a turret down just yet. Next big objective is that turtle about a minute away here. Things will start to fall in for, into place because both these fights now have been four versus four, right? The gold laners haven't been there. They've been farming up. 
Indigo. Indigo. Wow. Sokken secures the kill. The advantage of half HP on to Rigadiano, using that blazing duo to escape. Now Cerezo oh. with a follow-up and the taking of the kill. Cerezo now being falled, being bursted down by Arkham Hell. Trying to get revenge out of the kill, out of Rekordiano and Unigo. Now they're forced to clear more of the waves. They're forced to answer more and taking more turrets slowly out of Indonesia. So with that, they're able to grab a good play on the top side. Philippines might be looking to make a response though, right? They have to. This is also a big item pickup for Unigo at this point, six, almost seven minutes into the game. It's getting crucial, these first and second items. Look at this as the replay. The shot lined up from Sokken, able to get the kill. That's what I was talking about. And then keep an eye on Cerezo here. Comes in with a great wild charge, flicker combination. Great setup, top side. So now third turtle is up for the game. Do both teams go at this, five versus five? Or they keep doing it with just part of their lineup. Here they go. Argon Hill and half an HP knockup coming in from Vin. Now being bursted, the Argon Hill uses his own passive to escape that wrath. But Sison, though, looking for a way to Sock end it. Take him down Vin. Now looking for an avenue. Super can being trapped in for Cerezo. Can't do much. Now with the damage, all just checking just to take down Super Ken. We're getting out of secures the kill. That was four from Philippines trying to take him down. Tough to deal with there, right? But Philippines at least gets themselves a turtle. So it's not a clean sweep for the turtles. For Indonesia, they have some fight in them, right? That's why I was saying a lot of these items that are being picked up now at this point in the game are crucial. They'll turn the tide of some of these early skirmishes going on. Even if we take a look at this, right? Scaling department-wise for the Farsa pick on Arc Angel, he has that COD, he's building up into a second item. It should be proving a point, especially in, when we get to the Lord fights, right? You need that burst damage available to the team here. And at the same time, you've got the slow already with Ice Queen Wand for Unigo. So as they continue to scale up, will they be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these objective takes in about a minute from now? Here you go, you can, Scott, you guys can see the items as well. Two of the items locked in here for Reclutiano, and on the other side, Beatrix only has this BOD, right? Sokka needs a little bit more time to get the next item here. Probably the Malif Core. That's tough. Sokken goes down. Cannon securing a kill. Sokken gets his own first death. Unigo, though, damaged now slowly. Scorching it through the damage. Cerezo as well. This is the top lane contention. Yeah. They're not letting go of this top lane just yet. It's the first, it's nine minutes into the game, and they don't want to let go of the control of their own defenses. We have the first Lord to show up, and, and just by looking at their how they want to answer this, they want to hold and just be cautious of their next step. Scannon using the penalty zone onto two will be able to secure a kill here. Fellow airstrike connected onto two as well. First down, will this be the answer? Canon falling down the hands of Moreno, securing another point for Indonesia. Unigo here trying to hold off and clear something out. Philippines taking another death. And that's for a cannon. Yeah, then, okay, I was going to say, is he going to land that fireball? He doesn't. So, you know, unfortunately, but there is the Malefic Roar being picked up now by Sokin, even though he went down just a little bit ago. That'll help him shred through some of these defenses from the Philippines. Now that they secure their buffs here, they're going to have to go ahead and fight for this. Less than half health. Saison trying to taunt in Cerezo with a follow-up from uh, Arkong Hell, being trying to burst Ken and Cerezo. Now they disengage. They just want the objective. They just want the post Sokin taking down Unigo once again. And they just want to hold off. It's, it's just the objective. It's just the items. And Philippines trying to get a trade. Taking down the Finn. first turret. Now with a fall. Finn falling down the hands of Cannon. Saison looking for a way to take this purple for himself. Look at that. I mean, yes, the Lord went in the hands here of Indonesia. But Philippines, knowing that, they try to find a counter punch themselves, some form or another. That was the first turret. They were, able to, they were able to secure now. Here's the answer, though. Now being stunned right on to three. Saison oh. takes down Sokken, finally getting a kill. Wow. And follow up with Super Can. Cannon takes a point as well. Cannon looking for a way to chase off or push Cerezo out of the equation. But Viano with the follow-up and the trade. They take down slowly their objectives to their own hands, a push down bottom. Again, great response here from the Philippines. You know, even giving up or having that lore taken from them. They handle it quickly, they get a couple kills, they get a lead, right? It, it, they have now a very short, small lead in the gold department. They're gonna be able to scale up with some of that. 
Now Indonesia has to be able to respond, right? Yes, they're getting these objectives. They have to continue to get that space in terms of, you know, areas around the map. Both teams have two turrets down, right? Now, the big part of this, if you're Indonesia, is also you got to get that tier one down in the mid lane, man, because as the next Lord comes up, that small advantage of having this turret will play a part in that Lord dance, right? They'll be able to manage some of that wave a little bit better. So that should be job number one before this Lord comes up. Moreno picking up an Ice Queen wand will help pick off a little bit, slow things down. But this is what I was talking about. At some point, Arc Angel will have that Divine Glaive that he needs. A little more bursty on this far side. Spotted now. down one. Super Ken receives the Poe. Cannon. Saison eyeing over Super Ken and Cerizo. That's a oh. fall. That's a flicker onto Cannon. He's still sustaining it though. Rigidiana trying to find an avenue. Where will he go oh. in? That's a three man knockup. Saison takes down Cerizo. And it's a fall off being used. Using the Federation. It's Philippines right now. Arc Angel takes another kill. Saison falls down. Saison with the follow up. Vin ta being taken down. Three men members out of Indonesia. Man, Unigo just cooked Vin right there with the fireball, <laughs> literally cleaning that up. And that is tough, right? It looked so good for a moment because the Minoyan Fury was great. It found multiple members, but the response from the Philippines, they overlapped some of those ultimates very well. And even Rekutiano able to go in with a Blazing Duet. He used that Purify. He goes back in with the BMI, safely surviving that in exchange. Now that this Lord is up, still going back to the point, Indonesia still doesn't have that Tier 1 in the mid lane down. This makes it a little bit harder dealing with this space to work with, right? You're going to see them bunch up here. They have to get this information, but it's quickly taken down. Rodiano trying to poke down Super Ken. His health is dropping by the second. Now Cannon secures another knockup. Being taunted by Saison. Oh. Now Super Ken falls down. Follow up of Cannon. Vin in now trouble. Vin being in trouble. Appraiser's rock connected to the damage. Saison takes down Vin. Two member down on the Lord and the push in the mid. Philippines slowly getting a grip on the push and slowly eyeing on the base of Indonesia. Again, a win there for the Philippines, furthering that goal lead. They might just look to push it in here. Timers aren't too out of control, but unless they press this situation, this could be one for one. One for one, base is open. Philippines might able to take it down, take it down. So Rizzo, Rigidiano getting a point in the damage. Now Philippines once again, pushing slowly. No minions. Eyeing top just turret yet. here, minions just pushing in. Can Moreno and Sokka defend Super Gen as well, but it's too much already for Indonesia. Philippines bounces back. Usually a Valentina or usually uh, something else, it does work out against it, but we don't even have to worry about it here because it's banned out, right? This time, once again, Philippines will be on the blue side, Indonesia on the red, similar bans to a to an extent, but now that Novari and Eve aren't there, the what's the priority? Wow, alive. okay, it's Brody. Right away. Right away to go in the hands of Requitiano here. And again, if you want a little review of what happened yesterday and the days prior, a lot of these MVPs for the Philippines went to the hands of Requitiano on Brody himself. So this is a strong first pick. Response from Indonesia, though, probably going to be maybe a Teresa, maybe a Fredrin, right? Those are left open. Those are hot picks. We'll see if they go that route or they want to do something else here. Well, I agree with how Philippines is doing right now with the prior of the Brody. They took out the Navarro that you mentioned that's so effective. Oh. But OK, no. neither. Neither <laughs> of it. We're going to, to the Nether Realm. Nether Realm, we have Turnoise Puissants, and also with just having not or not seeing the Paquito or the Franco or even the Kaja Karita on the, this game gives so much freedom for Brody to actually roam around. Landing those hits correctly, using the Torn of Art memory properly in, in those kind of minded distance that you, that you get in team fights. I think it's a safe space still for Philippines. It, it changes the route though, but still what's open the table is Valentina. Valentina and Fredrin is actually beneficial also with this Brody start. <laughs> if the if man, if the Valentina's locked in here to go against this Fairmus pick, that's throwing it back a little bit, right? To the <laughs> to uh, meta we were once. I don't know how people felt about that. Once really happy about or they enjoyed or not. Um, still it's an option, but neither will be picked up. There's the Fredrin though. Ex Borg as well. I think this is a great choice. And then Indonesia right away in a snap taken up this Uranus pick in the XP lane. So that's a know, good steal though. Yeah, how are things falling in place here? Again, X Borg I think is 
a great option in the sense that even if you go 0-3 like we saw in game one, you still have impact through the course of the game just based on the way that he works, being able to push people back and kind of making them disperse for the last insanity. Good call there, though. The response from Indonesia for the second phase of bans, they take out the Valentina. Yeah, they have sustain. You have more ways to counter the early game of, uh, of a Hulk coming from an X-Borg, Uranus. Getting a good amount of winning stats yeah. from group stages. We, saw, we see it again now for the EXP. This is a great answer for longer team fights because at game number one, we were, saw, we were seeing tug of war. Extended team fights, push and pull, disengage. With this kind of zone now, with this kind of uh, access to the back line, gives so much potential for their marksman to have a good angle. But since Indonesia doesn't have their marksman yet, they bound out to Valentina. That's a good way of seeing their counter as well. They're having that dash just go through you and take an ultimate out. Well, that's one way to secure it. But having a Uranus with you, this opens up also the possibility for the Beatrix Everything to even be used again. Oh, good. interesting, right? That's just respect there. Volier. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless uh, they, of what, they how uh, the Volier side of the game number two is still a problem, but just being a utility. It, it's almost in a similar fashion, right? Like, even if you have a rough early game on Valir, it's just kind of annoying to deal with because like the whole game, you're like, all right, how do I dodge these fireballs? How do I not get stunned? You know, how do I find an entry point and not be pushed away to completely negate what we want to do, right? So solid last ban there from Indonesia. We'll see what the last one is here from the Philippines. But, you know, in a similar fashion, Indonesia, great that they have the Uranus. Might not be the most exciting hero, right? But what he does really well, aside from cutting waves even in the base, is the fact that he is just a unit, right? His He will literally one versus four in the majority of the game, <laughs> you know, until you can really handle that sustain. And then, you know, you try to follow up on it. And then, like you mentioned, you're really trying to extend some of these team fights, right? The Fairness is there for a reason. Use the Nether Realm. We've seen some clutch game-changing Nether Realm ultimates from Faramis players, right? And that has something to say about why Indonesia wanted to take it up in the first Ooh. phase. This is another this is good. that Melissa. has performed pretty well. Up against a Brody, especially. And the problem of utilizing muddles, just being thrown at you and using the eyes on you, because we know how Brody maintains his distance, yeah. maintains his space just to get on with the basic hits. But this Melissa, building towards mid to late game and just land all those hits correctly, that's just, comp that's just distance working for you and well, using a lot of damage. Well, again, at this point, you have to really decide what do you want to take here? Your last two picks for the Philippines, right? You need to be able to round this out really well. You still need a good magic damage <laughs> hero. Hey, and that. there it is, Farsa. What a better, none other, actually, this really isn't a better way to do this. And this is interesting. This time, they draft the Minotaur. So, you know, it, this in a way, it's like, hey, we're going to give it a go and see if it makes, makes this work. Because right now, Minotaur in the playoffs, he's 0 for 2. He really hasn't found success yet, but that doesn't say that this hero isn't great. It can be. We'll see if they have the follow-up to do with this. Now, one thing that I like about the dynamic between these four heroes alone, aside from the Brody for the Philippines, is there's so much pressure, AOE-wise and space-wise, with the kids yeah. that they have. And then you're kind of just allowing Brody, right, to, to get the marks off, to get the torn apart memory off, hopefully. And that's where the pressure is. So, wow, here we go. A favorite for both these countries and a favorite for a lot of viewers out there. They love to watch Fanny gameplay. In the jungle, it's gonna go in the hands of Super Ken. Okay, more response. Just Indonesia sur surprising everybody on the last pick. It was the first time it was the Diggy, now the Fanny. They had more ways of performing with this pick. And having great coverage around the map, as you mentioned, there's, there's so much AOE. There's so much CC on, on Philippines that they actually make use of. So with this kind of way of disturbing all of the lanes, even, in, even their own camp has an advantage of damage just by having a great start early on. Okay. As these both teams have their compositions locked in, we'll have to see exactly, again, on the execution factor for both of them. We know that they can control the early game really well. We know they like to pressure these side lanes. We'll see if they can do it. It's game number three. One to one. 
Indonesia versus Philippines having the same point. As we dwell upon all those choices back in the draft, this, uh, is this a greater choice now for Unigo? Having that Minoan Fury, having that knockup, as you mentioned, the space right now that they can do for team fights is so, so important. In game number one, they were, they were, they were, they were trying to look for an opportunity to make the perfect set because at some points in this kind of lineup when, you have, when you're up against a fan, you're even a Melista, you might want to penetrate from the back. Yeah, you have to focus on that, right? Again, when we talk about this Fanny pick alone, we talk about specifically high risk, high reward. You know, when we saw this even yesterday, we we're like, man, okay, when you pick in a, a Fanny, for example, you're either playing in style. Well, no, that really, you are just playing in style. You're trying to style and also snowball. Like, one of the big things about this pick alone, um, which we're going to see in a bit for Super Ken, is how, how fast can he set the momentum, right, for Indonesia here. If it's one or two kills on a jungler like Fanny, because this is a hyper-focused assassin, right? The past two games, man, we've seen a lot of utility tanky type junglers. Yeah. This time, it's a battle between that utility type jungler in the hands of for the Philippines, and then of course, you have Fanny and Super Ken. He's also, as we get a glimpse here while we still wait for a bit, Super Ken is rolling with a killing spree. Right, and so now you're 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 wondering, can you get the snowball going faster than you your opposing team? That's what they're going for. So we'll see if Indonesia can execute that the way they wanted to go with this draft. It's super important that they really utilize it. Yeah. Now early game. Okay, going back. Slowly on to this best of five. It's game number three. Philippines versus Indonesia, having the same point. And then as we wait to get into the land of dawn, a lot of things can be speculated. A lot of things can be broken down. There we go. But how will the execution work though? Early game, we have level three onto Arcangel and Unigo. And Ricatiano, having the aid here for the gold lane, pushes a lot of pressure. Look at that. Oh, speaking of which. This is exactly what I was talking about. Super Ken looking for that first blood. Great defensive maneuvers. Vin could be in trouble now. Nowhere to escape. A couple hits away. Who's it going to? They give it to Arc Angel on this farsa. Solid pickup. Good response. Good follow up, though. Early game, they know that they need more great start with the waves and also getting at the items. But that was just four members trying to take down Vin. An amazing response, an amazing follow-up. That slows down more of the potential for, uh, again, for the objective that can be taken, but he's still stuck on level three as of now. And as we get through this, right, this is the first turtle now up here. And with that first blood, it will help them a little bit. It's not going to change the course too much. Both teams still trying to get to level four. This could, though. So Rizzo might be in trouble. Fraser's Wrath not going to find the kill there. Had to use the Consecrate. His ultimate's down now. Should be able to regen a little bit, but still, Philippines in control of this first turtle. Vin also making his way, not able to get that level four just yet. They're going to have to battle this out. Might just go in the hands of Philippines. Nowhere to be found, Super Ken. There it is, the retribution turtle secured here for Philippines early on. And it looks like they're going to keep going. Vin going to be in trouble, falls once again in the hands of Arc Angel, gets the second kill. It was Super Ken trying to put the pressure on the purple buff, trading that objective possibly to take some resources, and that will not work for their favor. Good front line cover. Follow up from Unigo, and uh, wings by wings from Arc Angel's trying a bit of a burst poke against uh, Uranus and as well as the Baksha. Now looking by this progress right now on our screens, and even for the items, you have the Clock of Destiny present for Arcangel, and as well as slowly building up for defense for the export, we have the Warrior Boots. So maintaining more of these lanes, hold up, oh. Sorizo. Sorizo. Three. Yeah, that's tough, right? Uh, again, we did mention in the draft, he's gonna be going one versus three, but <laughs> not, not there. That, that, that time it didn't work out. Uh, for him, he needs a little bit more time to get a little tank here. This is crucial, though, man. Early on, we're not we're just nearing the four minute mark, and when you have a farsa this stack three and zero oh, early on, it's tough to deal with because the burst potential comes way sooner. So now we'll see them fight it out, putting the pressure on the purple buff. They know how much Super Ken needs it here. They either want to force out the retribution or possibly steal this themselves. Everybody joining the fight at this point, they're gonna go for it. Super Ken will fall. 
cannot on the run. Cerezo was trying to get the kill, won't be able to get it, has to back off. It's getting tough here for Super Ken. Again, this is what you want to do when you pick a high assassin-based hero like Fanny. You want to be able to scale really quickly, fast, and it's not happening right now for Indonesia. Arkang Hell, we're just having a small amount of health. Good positioning and utilization of the Feather Airstrike aided a kill from Indonesia. Taking down Superkin by just taking his own purple. Pushed him in a corner to even respond for a defense. But that was a good way of pressuring them. As you mentioned, de being dependent onto the purple buff is one thing that they can utilize against them. So we have the turtle up. And Philippines has more control here onto their own uh, area. So Saison and Iguardiano, though. They just give it up. Give it up as well. So Vin trying to see a potential for a Reggie battle, but no, he just taking them some vision now. Yeah, Vin might be in trouble once again. This could be a third death, and it is. Recutiano picks up the kill, picks up the kill here. And you're, you're, what you're seeing is just Indonesia trying to find some type of win. If that's just these buffs, if that's just these camps around the map, trading these objectives, it's what they have to do. At this early point in the game, with this momentum-based lineup, their backs are against the wall, right? So in essence, Super Ken gets this orange buff here on the side of the Philippines. They might look for a moment, look for a play, but look where Saison is here. He's going for the purple buff. So they might clash here. The fight for it. Look at the pressure. Ar Ark and Hale has to go out with the wings by wings. There's the feathered airstrike. Quite a bit of damage, though. Super Ken will fall. Can't get away with the cables. Unigo did fall as well. They finally get on the board here, but Sakin also went down. Off-camera kill here. Two fall for Indonesia, plus the first turret of the game in the hands of the Philippines. Clearly, Philippines having a great start with the push and also with the takedown. Super Ken falling down again. 0-2-0. Having the plate of Heptasis press on his first item actually denies the passive of the proc. The ambush oh. old. Speaking of which, take that down. Super Ken has, has taken another, again, an objective and a kill for his own. Man, right now... Like I said, you're kind of just scraping for what you can, you know, and with Super Ken getting that kill there, that is probably one of the better things that can happen to him at this point in the game. You know, he's losing some of these buffs. He's finding what he can. And so that's literally the response, right? Cerezo, once again, trying to go multiple members here. Can't heal up enough. Will fall in enemy territory. It's getting dicey there for Cerezo in that XP lane. Yeah. XP lane right now is getting more attention. So into the, its own lane of cannon right now, still holding his own defense. With a stand of 8-2, advantage of gold and economy is now with Philippines. Last turtle of the game, Indonesia would really want to contest this. They need that extra boost on the gold right now. He needs more items. They need more items for damage. Meanwhile, on down bottom, cannon has his own uh, immortality and just looking away to just to take down this turret. And as they go through this game, you can already see the nice lead the Philippines has garnered themselves. That's going to be another turtle for Saison. Vin taking the brunt of the damage. Is quite tanky at this point, though, despite going down multiple times. Can he hold on a little bit longer? The rest of his team not able to help him. It's just him versus four. Whittled down, taken out here by Repetiano. Another kill in the hands of this gold lane. Cerezo just trying to hold it down. This is looking rough. Oh, Ooh. man, he almost got away, but paired up there. A great combination from the Philippines. Level 11. Saison on this Frederin, onto this taunt, onto this tool. By this alone, adding so much engage, so much gank on the old lane. Speaking of which, Super Ken. Now being spotted down, being spotted up by uh, Cannon and Saison. Rigodiano now has the wind of nature, and this might be a greater chance to even hold the front line, but just being and connecting more of his hits. But now he can't actually move out, or trying to re remove Sakan out of the picture. He's building up with his items, he has the corrosion side, he has the DHS, probably building up to amplify those basic hits. Having or using the models right away in these kind of team fights can actually work for Indonesia. This is tough. The assault in the mid lane tier one's the focus here. Vin will take the brunt of the damage. Isn't able to keep them at bay. Kanon goes in with the last insanity, finds another kill. So Rizzo falls for the fourth time here. It's getting tough. Moreno now looking to hold down the mid lane as much as possible. Has to flicker out too. You wonder if it was worth it even going that far in the mid lane. And now down a flicker here. 20 seconds away from this Lord. 
three turtles taken by the Philippines. Is Indonesia actually in a position to contest this? They're going to lose the purple as well for Super Ken. He doesn't have that. This buff right here stolen by the Philippines is super crucial for a hero like Super Ken on this fan. If he doesn't have it, he loses a lot of that ability to move around, and that's why he's planning himself, taking a risk to possibly get another. Look at the damage. Arkham Kyle, he gets him off camera, but around the buff. So they lose a member. Can they somehow contest this lore down? A lot of magic damage. Gonna be going for it. Torn apart memory. Rekutiano trying to save this fight. Goes in with the jump. No infury from Unigo. Huge setup though. Turning it around. Double kill already. Last Good. hit send he's gonna use. Here's Super Ken. Can he turn it around? He goes in, gets the killing spree, and gets out of dodge. The Lord will reset. What an advantage trying to get the first kill. Rekutiano is not yet stopping. That is a 6-1-4 on onto this Brody. Eye on the first tier turn in mid. Philippines takes it down and has a better way in taking this Lord. They might start it up here. They know that in just a couple seconds, Saison will be up. He'll make his way to this Lord if they need him. A Super Ken, mobile as he is, will get here for the information, the possibility to steal the Lord away. They're going to hold it up. It resets. Again, both teams fighting for this first Lord of the game. This will help them push into each other's bases, focusing on these turrets. They're gonna go ahead and give it a go. Vin goes in, rolls in. Super gonna Ken. Gonna get dragged a little bit. Look There's the knockup, he's in trouble, will fall. Super Ken is still waiting, down a member. Vin is Looking gone. For a chance. He's gonna come down to the retribution. Unigo he's gonna spotted. spot him out. Can he go in? No, it's secured by Saison, and Super Ken has to get out. Okay, now, all of the objectives slowly being cleaned up by Philippines, forcing them to attack. Super Ken dropping on half HP. Cannon as well, securing most of the front line and just pushing towards the mid lane. We have a follow-up also from the Lord up top. Defensive-wise or defense item-wise, Philippines has more ways to answer the sustain of a Faramis right now against Moreno. So for Indonesia, look at this. They're working down from an 8,000 gold deficit. Super Ken is left to decide, what do I do? Is it to get a kill here on Rekutiano? He's going to go ahead and try. Wind of Nature already popped. He has a couple of marks on him. Torn apart memory. memory! Will not be able to get him because of the range. He stays alive for now. That was so close. That was really close. If he had an extra distance, he could have gone down right away. He's cabling. He's cabling. We need man. to check the defense department right now of Indonesia. We have Oracle and Dominance Ice present for the Uranus. A bit of a frontline cover, but for their own roam. We have the COD, we have the Lightning Truncheon, we have Mana. He has more ways to respond and to complete more of the CDR. Okay, they're gonna go ahead and assault the base here. First Lord of the game will be able to get them a turret. Vin taking quite a bit of damage. Has nowhere to go. Will fall in the jungle. Last Insanity pushing them back. To be able to clear this Lord here. Can Super Ben get a kill? Cannon. Can't. Cannon has the immortality. Still able to stay up as well. They're in trouble. So Rizzo, couple hits away. We'll survive Whoa. for now. Mino and Fury goes through. Nether Realm taken care of. Might be looking at the game here. Super Ken trying to turn the tide of this fight. They lose the mid turret as well. Still looking for a kill. They push back the Philippines. They're playing with risk here. They have to turn this around. They're going to go in. Cerezo goes past the wall. Archangel will fall. And they're still going. The Philippines might be in trouble here. Requitiano popped the wind of nature, looking for the kill. Can he get it? Sakin stays alive with the go away. Passing and they the hold left, on. But meanwhile, Cerezo. Cerezo, one versus four, will fall in the jungle. But Super Ken sweeps in, gets his buff. There was just fights all over, looking for a way to shut down one or two members out of these teams. Cerezo falling down, Vin falling down, looking just by the damage. They're capitalizing on Socket to get those kills and items in. By looking at those bursts coming from this Melissa, he has now the Golden Staff. He has more ways to utilize this Inspire. It's on cooldown, but it's so much effective. Being in the front line, Moreno, even by the presence of this Uranus, is a better way to buy more time and to throw models right away and use that eye on you. I 
can see potential of a comeback here for Indonesia if they kept keep holding this time, if they keep buying more time and find an avenue to go for a back line against Philippines, it's the answer for them to take a great fight up, on this, up until this Lord is about to be taken. Now that both junglers focus on this area of the Lord here, you're going to see them get in position once again. Super Ken has to get the information he needs to really contest this, but keep an eye on the map. There's some pressure here that the Philippines wants to put on. Philippines does this. That's exactly what they go for. And now, as the Lord is still worked on here, hell that half health, this is that Lord dance, like we like to call it. Both teams just holding it down. The purple buff is up. They know that Super Ken needs this. They have the information they need. They're going to make him try to either use the retribution or get oh, no. it. He uses the retribution to secure the purple buff. They have the information, and Philippines will punish for that, taking the Lord here. It's up to Indonesia to defend against this Lord push. Good resource forced out. Super Ken, he needs that purple. He needs that important objective by being just the Fanny, the damage dealer, and also the of also Salkin here being pressed on the team fights. They actually would really want that, but that time around it was just Philippines. They were diverting the attention and they were just taking down the Lord. Now they're pushing in mid. And this is what it could come down to for Indonesia here. They've got to deal with this Lord. They got to deal with the minions. There's the CC coming through. Ken, he's in trouble. The pickup, that is huge for the Philippines as they assault the base here. Looking to take game number three. Last Insanity pushing them back. And there's nothing that Indonesia can do down two the members. Base. They'll focus on the crystal here and take game number three. It could be a possible comeback of a pick for a Diggy as we go oh, into the draft. They go for? And they go for the Navaria. They have the space, they have vision, they have poke. Taken out and respecting the Kadida and also the Brody and even the Franco. Removes all the singular target pickoffs. And this time around, they could actually make an assassin pick work. But also for, for Philippines, banding out yeah. this three stable heroes that actually deal damage on team fights. Pickoffs and AOE poke. Eve, Ka Eve, Kaja, and Pakito. They will have their chances now to either secure the utility that could go for the Freddy, that could go for the Valentina themselves, or even for the Faramis. See value in me? Hey, well, back. they go with the Fredrin and the Farsa. The pick, sustain, and burst. The pick that has been working wonders for the Philippines right now. And previous game. What? He had three kills early on, I think something something along those lines. The first blood, then it built up to a three kills. And when that happens and you get those scaling that first scaling item very quickly compared to a you know a traditional build path or timing, that changes the course of the early game. You know, so they might be looking to emulate that process here for this next match. And, as, and you know, with that, here's the answer. Indonesia actually takes up this Baksha. This time, I'm assuming it's going in the jungle, right? For the most part, because again, Novario was priority picked. We have seen her flexed in the roam. We have seen her parked in the mid lane, but there's the x Borg as well. Okay, so similar. That's danger for this Farsa. On the positioning of the Farsa and in the hands of Archangel, he needs to be wary on where this x Borg will be. Where will the last insanity will be? Where well, this is a growing threat. Early game hits level four. Both of them can actually disable one another. It's They're moving a, out the burst. It's a growing threat, but I'm gonna be a little, you know, uh, Cerizo here. He's got to be careful on how he approaches this early game. We saw it before, right? He made up for it in that one game. He played Exborg. He died three times early on. He still had an impact. Previous game, he was playing the Uranus. Tried to do the same thing, it didn't work out. He was really shut down. So Cerezo alone has to be able to adjust for this game. It's great that he has the export, right? But can he actually uh, be impactful early on and not just have those multiple deaths going on? Because yeah. Last Insanity is great, but you know at the same time, you have to be able to serve that purpose in the XP lane. With that the game. Valir being picked up here yep. for the Philippines, this is also what we saw earlier on in the series. It worked out great for them. It's kind of annoying to deal with, right? You, you're going to get stunned. The burst What's fireballs are not fun to deal with. Okay, going back on your thought on that X board, he had a three death shutdown in the first two minutes. Yep. And by that, Indonesia found a way to have a comeback. That was just game 
uh, in the match earlier that actually made everything work. With the aid of their marksman, the Brody, or even a different way to utilize it with, with their own mage pick here could actually be beneficial no matter what comes next. You said you don't want those numbers, the death numbers, to just keeps on rising for this roamers and for this XP laners. It's a big of a factor in taking yourself into an addition, an advantage on getting the first turtle objective. Honestly, what I see happening here, let's see what this last ban is, but, you know, for the most part, because the Brody was taken out, I, I love that. That's great respect from Indonesia, because like we were saying, multiple no MVPs. And no off the top of my head, I was like, well, what gold lane is Indonesia going to take? And, you know, off the top of my head, it would be the Beatrix, but since that's banned out, you're kind of left to a couple of these options. We've seen Melissa pop up, but most likely I'm going to assume, let's see if on, they Dexter. take the, never mind, it's the Claude also gets banned out. So now... We've narrowed down the gold lane, right? And usually when we get to this, we see Irithel pop up. Melissa's there. We've seen great things from Clint. Uh, finally on teams, you know, yesterday having yeah. success with that. So, you know, does Philippines want to take that? Do they want to go for one of these picks that is slower? Go. And this is it. Like, the Irithel is great. But, I think. But it's slow. It's slow to build up. You... I, the, don't okay. Get me wrong. She's fast. Fine. Like she's fast. Slow to build up, but she's slow to build wise, up. It's fast. She needs literally four items to be successful for okay. the most part. Okay. I, I know we're going through. The, the damage needs to work out to probably the passive for the ultimate of the Irithel. So with this, he has more, or this Irithel rather is being picked up right here by Philippines, is to have safe passage around the Turkish Poissons, even around the Last Insanity, because at some point in game number one, there were a lot of disengages. And I get, where you're, I get where you're going there. He needs more damage, but with this time around that Valir's on his side to aid with his lane, maybe that's a good way to like amping up more of getting those items right away. There's a shiny new oh. hero in town. And we're going back to it. It's high noon here, but not really, right? In, in Romania. But Clint comes through. They're bringing out the cowboy for this game. And they need it, right? Valentina as well locked in, so that does mean we've got that We've got that combination. We've seen this many times. Novaria, Valentina. It can work really great, especially when your job is to just take that feathered airstrike for the most part. Yep. And now your poke potential is paired up with great burst potential just in those two heroes alone, if you can get it, right? A lot of the times what we've seen when Valentina is picked up is the opposing team will be very defensive on how they approach these team fights, not allowing or at least forcing the Valentine to, to get close enough, path. right? Whoa. So this okay. is another interesting pick that we haven't seen too much of up to this point. Even for Cannon. A couple times. We've yeah. even seen him part in the Rome, but obviously we'd like to see him in the XP lane. This Arlot right here will provide a very good setup for Philippines if they can pull off that final slash ultimate ability. Actually, the Vengeance as well is still working. Although the nerf on his ultimate is actually a great of a, a bit of a disadvantage for his own setup. But one thing also that we're seeing is how he can be really, really slidey in those kinds of initiations. In a way, this is still strong. Arlet and Valir for Philippines. So as we get a last look of these lineups for both these teams, again, this is match point here for the Philippines. They had a very strong game. The last one really able to control a lot of the pacing, but that was on the whims of an Indonesia picking a lineup that was so hyper-focused, so meant on momentum and snowballing yeah. that it was difficult to pull off. So here we go, jumping into the land of dawn. Match point in the grand final for the Philippines, wanting to take this title from Indonesia from last year in Bali. Can they pull it off? This is tough. A championship, a defending title on the line. How will Indonesia, will they see a chance to recover? A lot of ways that we can actually see the opportunity in their lineup. This execution will actually matter. Unigo trying to poke on Moreno uh -oh. with the aid of Arcangel. Trying to peel them off slowly. Using that retribution, Super Ken <laughs> secures his purple. Thanks for the heals, by the way. So he grabs that, but this is what you expect, right? The Valir did the same thing in the previous games. When it was locked in, you're just trying to poke down, to put pressure, especially around the buffs. You see them utilizing that, the kit, the burst fireballs, right? And it also, the thing about it too is the fact that when you have this buff, which you shouldn't technically have, 
it allows you to do a little bit more than you should. The pressure there is going to help them scale with this early game, right? 30 seconds away from this turtle. It's, it's great if no one goes down for the first blood before it so they can actually battle it out. But looking at these, who has the level four? They need the level four advantage. Moreno could be in Saison trouble. Saison is on level four. Moreno could actually be taken down here. Stun in a ton. Archangel takes first blood. As I was saying, man, right before the turtle. It would be great if none of the teams had the first blood because then you can really contest this one and start the pace, start the momentum for your team. But with Moreno going down, He's gonna need a little bit longer. Doesn't have the level four yet, right? Doesn't have the ultimate. Poking in the XP lane, fighting for the turtle. Might just be better. Give this up to the Philippines. Let them take it. Let's see if we can find something elsewhere. Astral Echo was trying to make a poke out of the last hit onto the turtle up top. It's Sock and falls down. Off cam kill, Ricardiano and Arc Angel with the aid in the gold lane. Rotate, rotating quickly, Arc Angel on this first item pickup. Elegant gem and the boots. He's getting busier by the minute. It's deja vu. Arc Angel, two kills in, nearing that three minute mark. He just needs one more and he's literally the same situation he was in the previous game. And what does that do for him? It helps him scale really well. He's almost done with his Clock of Destiny, which is a scaling item on someone like Farsa. It gets really scary. Dealing with that burst damage with the feathered airstrike. So Indonesia, they gotta slow it down a little bit. Right this early on, you're already down 1.5k gold. You have to be able to buy time, especially the fact that, yeah, Sokin on this Clint pick, he's going to be a little susceptible to ganks, right? You really have to be able to watch out for him. So with that, that was it. That was being picked up. The Clock of Destiny locked in here. Good taunt there. Half. Super Ken being in trouble. Used to force the Turner's Poissons. And we Bobby have Weave. the Feather Airstrike per poke, poking and bursting him down. He's peeled. Now he's now forced to take on his own jungle camp objectives. Meanwhile, down bottom, Cannon and Cerizo using that vengeance to slip out of the oh, area. Gugliano taking down Sokin. Now action is up top. Four oh, members of the field is here. Vin coming in from the phase. And now Vin flickers out for safety. Philippines trying to gain additional coverage in the first four minutes of the game. This is complete control in the early game right now. The Philippines, they are unrelenting. They don't want to let up at all. And this is exactly what you have to do when you have this lineup, right? You want to scale in really quickly. You want to be aggressive when you have the Valir. You're looking for these stuns. Indonesia, they're looking to make a play on the top side. They get the flicker out. Look at the Searing Torrent. Pushes them back. That's the power of a Valir right there. Debuff, push, push back, and also knock up from this hero alone. Valir. Valir. He is, pays dividends in Oh. Dealing with a lot of that initiation, right? That's why you pick a him up. A growing threat, a problem. They would need to answer with the magic defense item early on. This first five minutes, Philippines secures another objective in this first five minutes of the game. So with that, two turtles in. They further the gold lead that they have. Economy going way in the favor of the Philippines at this point. First item's already pretty much being picked up onto the second. Indonesia needs time to build back up here. They have to be able to choose their own fights, but at what cost and at what pace do they go for? Here, it looks like they want to go for Cannon. Cannon receiving the Astral Echo. That's the poke using that final, well, final way to evade that momentum. Archangel flickers out for safety using one of his own passives to escape the possible takedown. Sokken, though, taking on the, tur the, tur the turret up top, down bottom. Okay, still finding Anything they can. Indonesia still trying to get on the board here. That's the problem, right? They need a kill. We still have one turtle left. And if they can actually contest it, it would be great for the favor. They're starting to get the point. Big part of it is, do we at least have our first item? Do we have... Uh, are we building towards that second? Oh, final slash. Final slash doing the work for, for Philippines. Forced out. A last insanity out of Cerizo. Now he's forced into his own defense. Flicker, too. Back in the turret. Super Ken Moreno tries to clear this up. Sison being taunt. Using the taunt onto Super Ken. Trying to poke him down. Present for the purple and the orange damage. Using the torch for Sans to slow him down. Ken, on the other hand, they're ready for reinforcement. They back away. Indonesia respecting the damage in the first minute. But six minutes in. Philippines rotating quicker, trying to contest the Squirtle. Meanwhile, you know, up top, Cannon, though, clearing more of the minions in. 
And here we go, right? Third turtle almost up. They might look to contest it. Mid lane gonna be the focus here, though. Moreno dropping down low. He could be in trouble. Cannon, though, on level nine, closely getting another attribute for damage. Philippines still slow, still a slow engage. No skirmishes at night, suit. This is probably just another turtle in the hands of the Philippines, unless a Super Ken comes through here for Indonesia. He's got to do it. He's trying to get the vision, won't be able to get it. Now gets collapsed on. He might, yeah, he has to use the ultimate. So another resource down. That's three for three for the Philippines. If they wanted to end the game in this game four, they're well on their way for it. The gold lead's starting to build up. You can see a lot of this hesitation from Indonesia, but that's honestly what they have to do. You're so far behind in the early game. We can't blame them. They need defense. You, you have to items. build it. You have to build it back up. You have to choose your fights. Speaking of fights, now Super Ken might drop low. Recreano securing the kill onto Indonesia. Suriza receiving damage, being pushed back by the searing torrent. Suriza now, no Feraga armor is now being denied to use that ultimate appraiser strategy. Right, connecting. Also damage. Saison with the pokes. Moreno trying to push out more, but the peel is not enough yet. But with the push and the turret takedown, Philippines slowly advancing. Three turrets down for Indonesia. Berserker's Fury being picked up here for Rectiano on that ear fill. As I was saying, it takes time to build up, but when you have this kind of early game to mid-game transition for the Philippines, it happens a lot sooner, right? And at the same time, he's only got three of the items that he needs. If he gets that fourth one, it's really going to start to hurt. And this is it once again, when we look back at the MVP performances from the Philippines for Recutiano, the team allows him to be in this environment, to get to this point, and it will really start to shine as we get further into the game. You can see them really focusing. Now their eyes set on these tier two turrets. Again, Indonesia doesn't have much space to work with. Only one turret down. They're kind of forced to stay on the defensive here on this side of the base. Another tier two falls in the bottom lane. Still a slow, slow start. Feather airstrike, Arkang Hill trying to take down. Successfully, Super Can falls down. Eyes on the mid lane. Philippines looking to clear up more in the turret defenses. Going back to your thought there, Irithel is Irithel now completely a, a force, a complete damage tool by just pushing around the map. She doesn't really, like, that's the, that's the thing, though. Like, for Indonesia, that's just one problem, you know, that you're dealing with at this point. Now it's the Lord being just taken freely from the, by the Philippines. So you're back to this. Backs against the wall. We have to defend. We want to extend this series. We can't lose it here for Indonesia. Do we have what it takes to actually defend against this? Yeah, well, yeah, it's only the first Lord. We should be able to clear it rather quickly, right? Yep. But right now, Sakin. He needs more time. Clint, and if you guys noticed from the draft, there was a lot of bands here focused on the gold lane, and that's, there's a reason for it. You don't have these heroes that pop, that, that get picked up quite often to clear these lanes, to be on the defensive and handle these situations as well. Clint just needs a little bit more time. Berserker's Fury being picked up. That's a great step in the right direction. So Rizzo just getting his Ice Queen wand. So now at least some of that slow here can help deviate the Philippines a little bit, but this is where it really matters. Losing the tier two turrets, holding on to these last three in your base. Lord still making its way here in the bottom lane. This is where Indonesia has to step up. They have to be able to defend. Is this go time for Indonesia? Ashwalak will be oh. placed on Super Ken. He's trying to get out the post of damage. Rikuriano has on target. He's now pushed back to base to regen. Still no casualty though, still safe, but three ultimates used by Indonesia to defend that wave and to defend a possible takedown by Philippines. Rather successful defense, right? Again, it was only the first Lord. They should be able to clear it up pretty well. They picked up some key items for them as well. This helps them in the fighting department. Is it enough, though, to actually deal with a contestant when the next Lord comes up? Probably not yet, right? They're still working down 9,000 gold deficit. And you can see it here. Super Ken could Super be in trouble. Super Ken being chased down by Unigo, being chased on Rick at the other. Look at the damage. He can't do much. He now is on cooldown. 27s for Super Ken to re retrieve and recall back. Four members damage. left to defend. Look at the damage. This is a complete destruction. Look at that cannon. Vengeancing on through. Moreno using the Feather Airstrike arc on to their defense. Arkham Hell, and that is a pause.
that could turn the tide of that fight already in a split second just like that. This is a relatively low kill game, right? These teams are sizing each other up for the most part. We're almost 12 minutes in here. Oh, Unigo. And Unigo did die. Yes, yeah. he went down, but still, that's what I'm saying. Like, even then, you're still working from nearly 10,000 gold deficit. Before we jumped in this game, we were like, we've seen crazier things, right? We've seen turnarounds. We've seen crazier comebacks. For the playoffs, yeah. Turn around, 10,000 gold behind, something amazing happens in your base, and then, you know, it flips over. That's what Indonesia is hoping for, which really comes down to, once again, Sakin's got to stay alive. He's got a couple ways to stay alive. He's got Flicker. He's got the Bola. He can move back a little bit. But it's even up to the team. Like, how much peel do you actually have to keep your gold lane alive? Speaking of peel, Malefic man. Roar. That's great. Three-level XP gap against Requitiano. Three-level gap against Sakin. Damage by just his own basic hits. Movement speed-wise, he's quicker, he's agile, he's mobile. Quickly escape possible takedowns, but now they need more damage. You were, that was a good point that you were trying to mention about the items. Right now, it's not really ready for Indonesia to have this way of managing a team fight. Yeah. So they're respecting the damage of Philippines right now and they're looking for possible ways to have a pickoff. Okay, we're gonna take a quick look at the items here while we wait for this Lord to spawn. As we were saying, Sakin needed time to build up. He's gotten the time. A lot of things can be speculated, but now we return to the game. Here we go. Once again, Lord has not marched in just yet. Philippines is managing these waves the best they can. Lord now will be making its way down the mid. They're going to go ahead and wait for that. Indonesia has to hold on to these turrets if they can. Is it going to happen? They'll have their work cut out for them. They have to be able to displace or at least react to what the Philippines is about to do to possibly end the series here. Saison starting to fight Super again, dropping down low. Cannon takes down one. So is trying to hold in upon. Saison are getting out of the damage is now in. The base is too open. Now Philippines is now taking the base of Indonesia. Remember, remember their names. Recordiano, Saison, Cannon, Arcangel. And Odigo are your 15th IESF MLBB World Champions!